Welcome to the final part of our four-part series where we're building this functional geared heart pendant. In the first three parts of this series, we built the individual parts in a single part file, designing around some existing gears. In part four of our series, we're going to show you how to save each part as individual part files so we can pull them into an assembly file to help visualize the functionality of the assembly. Let's start by renaming the bodies that I want to save in the solid bodies folder. A shortcut for making these names editable is to select the body you want to rename in the Solid Bodies folder and press F2 on your keyboard to type in a new name. Let's name the enclosure base, the enclosure cover, and the 1.25 inch gear that we altered with some custom text. There's no need to save the small gear as we didn't make any changes to the original part. We just used it as a reference to design around. Before saving the individual bodies, let's save this part file in your desired location. Then go to Insert, Features, Save Bodies to select the individual bodies you want to assign to their own part file. Notice since we renamed the bodies in the history tree, they will automatically be saved as such. This brings us back around to the discussion we had at the opening of part one of this series on external links. The saved bodies function creates a link between the original multi-body part file, where we used the save bodies feature, and the newly created individual part files. Any changes made to the original multi-body part file will automatically update the individual part files. This is what's known as the top-down design approach, where a full assembly is designed within a part or assembly file allowing the designer to see how the parts interact on the fly, and thus creating references between the individual parts. This comes in handy when making design changes as the individual parts update themselves based on the changes you make to the original file. Now that we have our parts saved as individual files, we can put them together in an assembly file to bring the heart to life. When you open a new assembly file, you're automatically taken to the Insert Component Property Manager. Let's browse to where we saved the gear heart base as we want that component to be fixed in our design space. By simply clicking on the green check mark, the part will be placed in relation to the origin where it was built in the original part file, and it will be in a movable part. Now let's insert the rest of our components, this time clicking in the design space rather than on the green check mark. This leaves the parts floating in space and movable. Before mating these parts together, let's apply the desired materials. I want the enclosure to be constructed from stainless steel and the gears to be made from bronze, both with a brushed finish. In the Appearances Display Manager, you can double click on the existing assigned materials to apply them to additional parts. In this case, just ensure the Apply at Component Level option is checked. Now let's begin assembling our pendant using some standard mates. First, we'll create a coincident mate between the back face of our large gear and the face of its receiving pocket in the enclosure base. Most of the time, with standard mates, SolidWorks will automatically understand what type of mate you're trying to achieve. For example, when selecting two cylindrical faces, SolidWorks assumes you'd like those cylindrical faces to be concentric. We will repeat these coincident and concentric mates with the small gears as well as the enclosure cover to finish the assembly. Note that the enclosure components are completely locked down, but the gears have been left free to spin around the pegs. We can now create a mechanical mate to simulate the interaction of the gears. First, we will just visually rotate the two small gears into place to align their teeth with the larger gear's teeth. A mechanical gear mate isn't actually creating a relationship between the two gear's teeth. 
It is simply creating a relationship that states when one gear is rotated, the other gear rotates in the opposite direction. When the gears are different sizes, SolidWorks can automatically calculate a gear ratio. Let's run through this exercise for properly creating these mates. With these gears, we already know the small gear has a pitch diameter of 0.5 inches, and the large gear has a pitch diameter of 1.25 inches. The small gear already has a sketch for its pitch diameter that we can reference, but we can edit the large gear directly within this assembly file to add a pitch diameter sketch to help in applying our mechanical mate. Right-click on the part you'd like to edit in the history tree and choose the Edit Part button as shown. Since this is a new assembly, you will first be prompted to save the assembly file before proceeding with altering one of its components. We can now add the 1.25 inch diameter circle sketch to the front face of the large gear. Let's unhide the pitch diameter sketch associated with the small gear. Once in the Mate Property Manager, click the arrow next to Mechanical Mates to expose the options. We're going to create a gear mate and then select the pitch diameter sketches for the gears you want to mate. Notice that SolidWorks automatically calculates the gear ratio based on the diameters of the selected sketch entities. Alternatively, you can create the same mate by selecting the cylindrical faces on the center of the gears and then manually entering the gear ratio if you know it. Now let's just repeat this mate with the small gear on the other side. We now have a fully mated assembly, and we can see how well our changeable message functions. I hope you enjoyed this unique introduction to mechanical mates. Until next time, this is your fellow gearhead, uh, I mean gear heart, saying thanks for watching.